Okay, so this is chapter six, winding down the last lesson, lesson five. And this is actually the easiest part of the unit. It's called enthalpy of formation. So Hess's law can be used with other thermodynamic data to calculate the enthalpy for many different reaction types. So heat of formation, in other words, the delta H of a compound from its element, elements is labeled delta HF. So the heat of formation is the amount of energy that's needed to create one mole of a compound from its elements. The heat of formation is usually given for reactants and products in the standard states, meaning solid, liquid, or gas, since delta H depends on the state of these items. When in the standard state, the denotation is delta H with a little circle F, and that refers to the standard state. So here in this example, you have two carbon moles solid plus three hydrogen gas plus one-half O2 yields one mole of ethanol. So the delta HF is negative 277 kilojoules. And that's the amount of energy that's needed to form one mole of the product from its elements. Things to remember. Delta H is a state function, so we are allowed to apply Hess's law and add together appropriate reactions to calculate the delta H. And that's supposed to be, sorry, the little zero F. Okay. The standard enthalpy of formation of the most stable form of any element is zero. So all elements by themselves or in the free state are going to be zero. And what that means is we don't need to find out how much energy is required to produce each element involved in a reaction. How do we find it? The total delta H of the reaction is equal to basically the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants where n and m are the stoichiometric coefficients from a balanced equation. Now it sounds complicated but it's not. It's really easy. The biggest thing where students make mistake in this type of problem is the math and not watching their signs. You must watch your signs. Okay, for example, if we have a simple chemical equation with the variables A, B, and C representing different compounds, so A plus B yields C, and we have the standard enthalpy of formation values. So these are either given in the appendix of the book or they're given to you on a sheet of paper if it's an exam. So the delta H, F, for A is 433 kilojoules per mole, the delta HF of B is negative 256 kilojoules, and the delta HF of C is 523 kilojoules. So the equation following the rule, the delta H of the reaction is equal to the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So what we would be doing here is C, which is 523 minus and then A plus B, 433 plus a negative 256. And the sum of that. And then when we do the math, we get 346 kilojoules. Now this problem was easy because we only had a one-to-one -one ratio for all of our reactants and products. If it wasn't one-to-one, -one, we would have to then multiply those individual delta H values by the coefficient. Okay, I'm not sure what happened to this slide, but it didn't record what I was saying. So, here we have the combustion of propane, and they give us the delta H for all of the reactants, except for oxygen gas, which wouldn't get a delta H because it's in its free state and it would be zero. So, again, following our protocol, Delta H of the reaction is going to be the sum of the products minus sum of the reactants. So in this case, 
we have three carbon dioxide, so three times negative 393.4, plus four waters, four times negative 285.8. The sum of that minus the ethanol, which is a negative 103.85. And the exact answer we get is negative 2219.35. Kilojoules. On this one, we have the decomposition of glucose into alcohol and carbon dioxide. And we're given the delta H of the glucose, ethanol, and carbon dioxide. So this is simply going to be delta H of the reaction products. We've got ethanol. We've got 2 times negative 393 plus the ethanol, which is 2 times negative 277. 0.7 minus our glucose and our glucose is negative 1260 and we do the math on that we're going to actually get negative 82.4 kilojoules okay oxyacetylene welding torches burn acetylene gas C2H2 Calculate delta H in kilojoules for the combustion of acetylene. So you've got a balanced reaction here. So the delta H of the reaction is simply the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So if I write this out, I'm going to get delta H of the reaction is equal to my products. I've got 2 H2O gas, so that's negative 241.8 plus 4 CO2, negative 393.5. So I need the sum of that minus, and I have 2 acetylene, so that is going to be 226.7. And when I do the sum on that, I get negative 25,1120 as the exact answer, kilojoules. And that's for two moles, as you can see right there. And the last problem, using the standard enthalpies of formation, calculate the enthalpy change for the combustion of one mole of ethanol. And the reason why I did this with this is because in the, in the textbook, you're probably going to have to go to the appendix and at the back of the book and look these up. So I would go to the back of the book. I would look up ethanol liquid, C2H5OH, and I would see that it's equal to negative 277.7 kilojoules. And O2 is going to be zero, standard state. We got CO2 gas. We got to make sure we pick the, the right one. And that's negative 393.4 kilojoules. Water's the big mistake because there's water liquid, water gas. They're right next to each other. You have to make sure you grab this right state. And that's equal to negative 285.5 kilojoules. So they want the combustion for one mole of ethanol. So products minus reactants, my delta H of the reaction is going to be equal to 2 times the CO2, which is negative 393.4. Oh, I should have, shouldn't have done it like that, but let me get a different bracket in here. Okay, plus our water, we got 3 times negative 285.5, and 
and then we have to subtract from that the ethanol, which is negative 277.7. And when I do the math on that, I get, I'll put it up here, negative 1366.5. So they rounded their answer. All right, fairly straight and easy stuff. And that's it. We can put this unit to rest.